straight back out because I've only got an hour left. Let me just tell you something here. Right. You can't put bank sticks in there so I am going to go home and adapt my trolley here. Now if you look, I've actually adapted it after sitting here for two hours thinking about it. I've reversed the handles there so they curve downwards and it's absolutely perfect because I use a my bait bucket here so I can get my ground bait out like this, Let's just get my ground bait out. Obviously throw it in the wrong position, Graham. Oh well, ho oh hum. But with the curve down there, the rod sits nice and flat, look, just, and it goes into this bit here, look, there. Just fits perfectly. That one, oh, I missed that one. Yeah, he's had the worm off. That is just about the right height as well. So I'm going to probably try and put a bracket or something to take a rod rest there. A tube maybe. Let's have a look. Let's get, we've got a bit more bait. Using sort of half of tiny segments of worm at the moment, trying to get a, trying to get a big roach. Perch seem non-existent. There we go. The wind has gone down for a minute, so that's nice. See, look, the rod just goes perfectly. It's got little ridges here as well. There, for your fingers, and that also puts a little kink there. So that's pretty handy, I'm quite pleased with that. I'm probably gonna find a way of fixing um, a rod rest there, so that any other place that I go to, I've got my automatic rod rest system there. So I was just looking at my old push barrow and I thought, turn the handles upside down, they're at the perfect end uh, to put the rod at the front. I need a slightly higher one at the back. I wonder if I could make something from that old tripod thing, which was, was in the skip, it was broken, the guy threw it away and I repaired it. But I don't really use it because I don't fish many of those staging type places. It'd be handy if I did. So I've got my, let's turn it around so there's no free adverts here. Uh, by this model, this is the one that catches you all the fish. I get a commission from it as well. No, I'm not one of those guys. There it is. I've just got to find a nut here somewhere that, and fit that thread. Maybe two just glued on top of each other because I've got to allow for the depth of the thread there. Otherwise, if I screw it in tight, it might pop the nut off again. I don't know. Let's have a look. There's no shortage of nuts in here, of which I am one. Ah, oh, that looks... Very, very similar. And I'd better take those as well. Let's have a look. Oh, by the way, these are the nuts and washers you need to go with this outfit, of which I get commission. Not. Or nut. <laughs> oh, it's early in the morning for me. If one of these would fit, I wonder if it's a standard thread. No, it's not. Well, maybe it is standard, but... Oh, 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 no, that's a semi-thread. There we go. In about one and a half to two turns, I can't find anything. It must be some weird oriental thread or something on that one, but that's enough if I could glue it. Now, all I'm going to do is go and get the uh, tripod thing and see if I can adapt the back. That will definitely do me for the front. The back legs are like this. They're not a triangle. I think I'm going to have to saw the other piece of bar shorter so that if I get this here I just have a legs, two legs there a little bar and two legs there and that will just stop it wobbling a bit Hacksaw time I feel
and I've cut it all up, I've realised if I can get this locking cap off it, it might be glued. Oh, it's moving. Oh, excited. How can I get that off? Because that would help me just lock it together if I can get it off. Looks like it's been made as. I don't think it's screwed on there. No. Maybe it is, maybe it is. It's a little thread, but I can always glue that. Now I'm figuring, guys, this could work sweetly. If it fits over there, which it does, I glue that in position here, I'll just show you. So, the principle is, I have to get that just right. Belong to my granddad, that, then my dad, then me. Still gonna bend things in it. So here's the principle, look, I've sawn it to pieces, sawn the legs down low, because it's all broken anyway, it's all bits and pieces. Got the cap, I glue that in there like this, right? See, that's glued in there. Get it out of the right way. I probably actually will put it underneath. Then the back, the back rest here, I've sawn that all down here, but two different diameters, so I'm hoping, go on in my son, that goes in there. It rests like this. Oh my god. Oh, actually, I don't need to glue it though. It locks. I think I will anyway. So then I've just got this piece there as the backrest. Whether that's high enough, I don't know. I would have liked something a bit higher. I don't think I've got anything I can adapt. I've, 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 sawed, it. I've sawed all the bits and pieces up. I figure that's going to work, people. Because the bar still goes in and out like this, so I can put I, I can put a rod over there out of the way. Let's get it out and set it up and just get some form of idea of how this is going to work. Okay, here's the principle, guys. Look, there's the handle. But I found if I turned it upside down, that's a perfect slope there. This one I don't actually need in position anyway. So I'm basically I'm going to you, you see it better when it's. The rod. I'm going to have the backrest there, and if I can find a way of maybe, say, so gluing those nuts there and there, if this came out, I could screw that bar there, which would be even better. I could have done with that being higher. It's a shame I couldn't get it higher, but it was certainly from here would be okay. At least one nut there. I could put one buzzer there, or I could even screw. Um, just a rod rest in there, but I would like one there and one there. So this is basically how I'm going to put it. That's going to go at the back. Rod's going to go down there like that. I could have done with it a bit higher, but I, you know, I've, I've mullered everything. So I'm just going to get the chair to give me an idea. Here I am. Pretend there's water out there. I'll be sitting. Out here somewhere that will be farther back. I'll probably want to move this across a bit there so it's close to me but then I have the float rod there. Hmm, I really need something I can screw there, a nut close in to raise this. And if I take this off does this come off or not? It might not come off, I might just have to put, it would have been handy to have that bar there in fairness. Unless, of course, wait, I screw this in about there. Oh, that might work. And cut that bar off here. Both ends. Got to be equidistant so that I can, I can turn it. If I put the nut, say, there, I could put these sideways and just pinch them. And then I can screw it, as you can see, onto the nut because I've cut it so it's shorter from there. So I'm going to cut a hole here and just see if I can bed that nut in there. I just want to cut a bit of a flat edge so that it, uh, the glue will hold it in there. This could be something totally different. In fact, I'll tell you what, I don't think anybody's ever done this on YouTube. I wonder if the old copier would be out. Let's see if I can get that flat there. Well, I got slightly carried away, guys. I'm down at uh, Watmore now. I've got to give this new, customised, fully 
unpatented and customised barrow a go. And I'm going to try float fishing, I'm going to try with this quiver tip. So fingers crossed, I might be able to even catch a fish for you. Just got a few hours. I'm really pleased with it. I won't be if it doesn't work though, will I? Just going to fish down this side and try one close in. I've got to bait up a little bit out a deep and see if I can get anything on a feeder for you. Right, bear with me for five minutes. I'm going to get set up here. By the way, Andy's uh, the owner's over there. He's going to be running a chipper because they've cut all the tops off of these. Look, he has to do this because they just turned into huge overgrown uh, trees, really. Um, so he's cut all these back and he's got heaps of them look like this. They manicure it really well, it's a nice fishery. Chip all that up, so it's going to be noisy later on. He's got it over there. The orange monster, the demon. It's going to be noisy, I dare say. What I do notice though is, looks like some rush stems or something down there have died back. I wonder if I fish on the edge close in there, where that drop off is here at Walkmore, it's very deep. It might be worth just going in the corner there and just see if I can't uh, pick off roach or perch and I'll try a feeder out because I can use that pylon there. See the reflection in the pylon, pylon in the water? I can use that to target a feeder. I think we'll try the float first. We'll try the barrow first. I've got to get it set up. The principle being, Andy doesn't want all this destroyed because all these scalpings get loose where people put robbers in them. So I sat here thinking about it, thought, how can I make this work? And maybe, maybe I have. I don't know if you're going to hear this with the old Andy and his chipping machine going over there. And that first small perch, I've got something else hooked up in. I don't know what it is, it's not a carp, I don't know what it is. I'm wondering, I'm wondering, is it one, a perch? It's a funny old fight. I've just taken my time, I'm on size 20 hook, two pound bottom. I don't know what this is, boys. Doesn't feel like a roach, if it is, it's a good one. I've got the net, I'm gonna get the net, hang on. Maybe it's a small, tiny carp, I don't know. Halfway through a packet of crisps. Oh, it's a, it's either a monstrous roach, it could be a bream. Take a look at that. What? Christ, check this roach out. 
Oh my god. Oh my god, I got no scales. Check that roach out there, boys. I was sort of secretly hoping that was a perch. It is even better. I've got to be careful I don't pull this camera over on a little plastic tripod. My god. I'd say that's not a million miles, it might even be a two pound roach. That is a spanker. The size of it. Absolutely superb. Worm, not maggots. And on my new, fully unpatented brolly. I'm going to put a brolly holder on that beach just as well. Let's get this guy back. What a beaut. I mean, <laughs> did you say I deserve it? I'd have to say no. But then maybe I did because I took a lot of trouble trying to get that rest right. Worms out again. Now, while I'm actually. Hello, had a beep. There's a beep. There's a beep on the buzzer. He just knocked the worm towards me. He just slack me a bit. But while I'm using that reversed handlebar on the barrow, you can see it curves down, and I'm fishing to the right, you might not have that facility. Every fish we might want to fish to the left. So you basically just take this arm off, unbolt it, put it in this side, turn the barrow around, push it, say in this corner, and I can fish that direction, I can fish across there. And he's still going with his chipper. Oh. That was an absolutely monumental roach. Well, it would be nice to have a, a massive two pound perch to go with it, and a five pound carp on the logworm. Well pleased with that, I'm going to show you in a minute the other two uh, ways I've altered that configuration um, so that it can fish with rods up high if I go barbel fishing, something like that or even if you want to fish on a lake and you want the rods up higher with a buzzer or with just like I've got there I mean look, that's, that's no, I haven't got to bother about pushing rod rests in or anything it's absolutely looks ideal at present Well I've been waiting a bit between bites but there's another one on worm there. So it's a good roach in here, but that other one was a totally different creature, as you can see. Look at the size of that one. Which is still which is still I consider a nice roach. I'm not one of those specimen hunters that only wants three pounders. No, never seen a three pounder, I'll be honest. But I was just going I think I I might just plumb that depth again to be honest. I'm just not quite getting as many bites as I as I think I should do. Still getting very, very tentative bites. I don't want to strike early with worm you can afford to hang on a little bit. They're just up and down with the float, so you can't really tell if that's a small fish messing around with the worm, sucking it in, blowing it out, fiddling around with it, or it's a bigger fish that's swirling around and just knocking the float. It's bouncing up and down, but it's not like a bite bite. It needs to go boom, under. Got a bit of warm winter sunshine. Back into the winter, I think technically it might be spring, I don't know. That's what we're told, you've got to laugh at that one. Well pleased, well pleased with the setup here, well pleased. Look, I don't expect to catch tons, but it's, you know, it's, it still can't, constitutes cold water winter fishing, but I can, this is definitely the way forward for me. No more grinding rod rests in the, uh, in the concrete, none of that. I'm gonna bump that one, it's very often you get a bite. We just bump it. I'm a little bit too close in. I think I'm out of the swim a bit. And he stopped with a chipper, which is nice. If my ears are ringing, can you imagine what ears, ears are? I'm on. <laughs> I shouldn't have been looking at the chipper. Here he comes. 
just saw the float, didn't do it that time. There it goes. Look, they're just a nice stamp of roach here. Just regular roach. The other one, I've never caught a roach at be to be honest, in this lake. I know they're in here, but I've never caught one. And these are just plain old garden worms that I dug. They're not anything special. Well, they are, they're catching fish now. This backrest is a good setup too, and well, well pleased with that, that could work. No problem at all. Now, if I get a crash day from a big fish, sooner or later it's gonna happen in the summer, probably when they're more aggressive, a whole lot might go in the water. <laughs> Picking away at fish like this, no problem. You decide what you think for yourself, but I know I'll be using that up on the river wide barbel fishing, or indeed if I'm distance fishing with a quiver tip and I want the rods up high. Just wait for this bite to progress. You won't see it with this camera, but it floats just to the right of the rod top there. Just bump it once. Very often that you can get a take after bumping it. Now, fish has taken that because, oh, a little tweak on the right as well. Fish has taken this here, the floats come way up in the water. Now, there's two things. It could be the fish picking up the shot, or it could be the fact I'm coming up a bank or a shelf. So as I bring it in, the bottom shot, the two shot I've got, you know, just dust shot resting on the, on the, on the lake bed, are actually resting right on it, or it's getting shallower and shallower. I'll give it one more bump. You never know, very often you can induce a take like that. Here he goes, here he goes, he goes. Got him, got him, fish on boys. Oh, 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 this could be a big, this could be, oh, I could knock the camera over, this could be a decent one boys. Oh God, it's not where we want a big roach is it? Oh my God, I won't be able to survive it. If I see it, I think it's a big roach people. I think it's a big roach, I'm gonna put this down. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, this won't take it. It's a big roach, not as big as the last one. Be a bit more here. Look at the size of this fish. Oh my word. Oh, it's a beauty. Absolute cracking roach, people. Absolutely spanking. Great big roach. Check that one out. Not as big as the other one. I think you'd agree. Pretty good size roach. What a beauty. Okay, so you've got the standard rod rest here, into which you can obviously unscrew here, most of you know all this. I'm watching that float at the same time, I'll do it that way and I can watch the float. So you can unscrew here, you can put a buzzer in there, and you think, how is he going to get that to go into his carp barrow and of course you can extend it up and down so I might want the rod really up high like this right down here I'm going to show you on this side down here some of that leftover tubing from this gizmo thing that was all busted I've sawn off and taped here I can do it with fishing line if I want but there's a ring here for tying on your um, lanyard or your bungee strap to hold your gear on there so that is a perfect fit watch this the diameter goes straight down into there. But I'd want this facing this way. So all I've done, put one the other side. Hopefully you can see this. It goes down in there. Doesn't damage the banks or anything like that. I can tip this angle up or back like this. And then I can fish a quiver tip rod just resting in there. So this one I've changed over. Put a worm on it, some 2.6 line and an ordinary hook. So just so people know what quiver tip is. It's a section at the top of the rod which is very, very, very thin. It's for beginners, see? So you're register, registering bites like this. You're looking for the pull on the bite. Now you can also put, as well as a quiver tip on, you can use that in conjunction with a buzzer, which I do, a bite alarm as they say. But if you can see that, where we are there now. I would normally be casting way out there, but I'm just doing this just to show you how the facility is there, if you like. I'm just using this barrow, look, absolutely perfect. So you think, well, I want two rods, mate. I've got two rods, that's fine. All you do is you unscrew here, 
take the arm off. You don't use that attachment there. You turn it this way to you. So I'm not going to do all this just to show you. You can obviously see how it works. Turn it this way square and those two become here and I can fish a pair of rods side by side and sit and watch the quiver tip on the top there. Now listen, if I turned this barrow that way you can see how two of these would fish as a pair or that way, you can't put the rods here but watch this people, I could pull this up here I can face it that way and have it even higher if I want and I put look, two nuts in there just like this a couple of nuts on the top of these ridges here and they're the same thread as the buzzer I'm not going to move all this barrel just to do this you can get the principle of it so if I wanted I could fish them high up like this as well with a bobbin on there uh, if I wanted to fish up here or I could even put them higher and have them shallow so I can fish them up I personally I personally like this one here in fact I'm going to leave this one out to fish leave this one down there it's gonna fish on its own it's got two chances as the saying goes one and none so I can even float fish here and I can have a quiver tip there you can see it's on the buzzer and it's also on the quiver tip up there and see I'm gonna leave that in and see if we can't luck out normally I fish a pair of these rods with a swim feeder There we go, another pristine roach there. So the float is the way to go. Not much. Yeah, lovely colours in that one. Not much on the uh, quiver tip one. I'm using the same piece of worm. Well, I just talked to the fish with paintly obviously it's not one of them big roach. I'm not quite sure how long it lasts on a size 20, but it is definitely a carp. It hadn't sort of well woken up yet. Certainly the float has definitely outfished the, the ledger. And what weather for float fishing? You'll have done the rest of the hedge tomorrow by the time I get this handy. <laughs> Shall I leave you with it, mate? Yeah, yeah, I might be a while, I'm only on like two pound bottom and two pound, two pound and a 20 again. I've, I've gone all match. I, I caught a 19.2 the other day and I had five pound bottom. It took me a half an hour. Really? Yeah, but what a lovely fight. Yeah, well, you, that's where you come for, isn't it? Yeah. yeah that's it, mate. Anyway, good luck to you. Okay, I'll see if I get him. Yeah. Well that was on a tiny grain of sweet corn, well I say a tiny grain, just an average grain of sweet corn. I'm going to have to spend a bit of time on this, this might be the only big fish of the day. On my new, there it is guys, fully patented bite indicator come rub rest. He's stripping me out, oh dear, oh dear. Come on. Come on, Mr. Fish. I feel I'll bend in this rod. I can't give it any more because it's, look, it's a carp. You pull hard on the two pound something bottom, two two or whatever it is, it's going to pop. Might pop anyway. I just take my time with it. I've got about 40 minutes left, so this really is, if I do get it, the only chance I've got. I've had some beautiful roach. It shows you those fish are in the swim. 
I was kind of surprised because I was starting to pick up a lot of roach on corn, on a single grain of corn. And generally the fish will go off. You know, the roach will get pushed out by a carp where they're more aggressive feeders. And I think I might be all right on the hook link because I put quite a bit of pressure on it. But, you know, I don't know about the wire of the hook. You want a good strong wire hook because if you pull too hard, if the hook link doesn't go, a fine wire hook can open up. It's just springing. It's like this and it stretches, stretches, stretches and then ping, it pops out. And then when you get it and you wonder why you lost the fish, well, the hook springs back into position like this. So it stretches, pings and then goes back. So you, you do, it doesn't stay bent open normally, it will spring back. So you think, why have I lost it? It's just that it has opened up. So be aware of that, beginners on fine wire hooks. Superb evening. I can't see him. I don't think it's a huge carp, but they fight so hard in here. It's a job to tell. Nice big swirl over there. Don't get him by the line. Here he comes. I see him down here. No, I'm not going to be able to. It's a common carp. I'm living dangerously on this uh, hook link. I do find the commons do fight quite a bit harder than mirrors, I find anyway. Than what you guys out there think, which is the hardest fighter, commons or mirrors. Yes, he's rolled sevens or eights, I guess. He swam straight in. How nice. How convenient. Oh yes, yeah, a nice one. Very, very, very gold, this one. Look at the gold colours on that. I can say he's, he's getting towards eight. Chunky across the back. And really beautiful. Oh, look at the colours in that one. That is unusual, I think, for the winter. Let's get him back. Wow, I've really christened this thing, haven't I? Giving it a real workout. Well, I've had about another 20 roach, some of really nice fish. And single grain of sweet corn did that after that carp. It's just died on me a bit. So it's getting cold because the sun's going down, so I think I'm going to call it quits. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll see you in the next one. Fingers crossed, I get lucky with this barrow again. I have every intention of using that barrow as a rug rest again. We'll see you guys in the next film. And don't forget, have a look at how I've done that barrow for bite indication and rug rest, and maybe come up with some ideas yourself. We'll see you in the next film. Oh,